Hi, it's Friday the 3rd of July 2020. I've had a couple of nice days in Toulouse and now I'm continuing my journey to the south of France. So I'm at the, the Port de l'Embouchure and, th and this is a canal junction. So this is where the, the Canal de, de Garonne, which I was following down to Toulouse, meets up with the Canal de Brienne, which connects the canals to the river Garonne. And it meets with that and also the Canal du Midi. And that's the canal I'll be following down to the south of France. Just down there, I don't think my GoPro will pick it up very well, that big white mural. That's a mural dedicated to Neptune and they put that in when they built the Canal du Midi. So this is the Canal du Midi. Unfortunately, I won't be able to follow it all the way because surprisingly the, the campsite situation isn't that brilliant along the Canal du Midi. There's, there's a couple on, in some minor villages but they've got no websites, there's no details at all. So I have to leave the canal for a while while I go to a campsite but for hopefully for the most part I'll be following the canal all the way down to the Med Coast. The weather forecast is looking quite promising for the few days so hopefully all I need is shorts and t-shirts between here and the Med Coast. There's the main Toulouse train station. So here's my first aqueduct. This is where the Canal du Midi crosses the uh, orbital uh, auto route around Toulouse. When they built the Canal du Midi, they planted around 150,000 trees along the route. And these have two reasons. They, they have a lot of shade, which prevents the water evaporating in the hot summer and the roots help to bind the bank together and th this is partly what makes the this cycle ride really great because the south of France obviously in summer it gets very hot it's very dry but you get lots of shade while cycling along the Canal du Midi so it really is an ideal cycle route ever since Roman times People have always wanted to build a canal from Toulouse to the Mediterranean because the problem always was they, they couldn't transport goods from the French Atlantic coast to their Mediterranean coast by a, by a, a waterway. The only, the only way they, had, they could do it, the, the French ships had to sail all the way around Spain which took weeks and of course it was very dangerous because of bad weather and pirates and so on. And so they've always wanted to build a, a connecting canal from the Garonne River to the Mediterranean. The biggest problem facing people who wanted to build a canal is that between Toulouse and the Mediterranean, the ground, there's a big hill, the ground rises and it rises, it rises up to 189 metres above sea level, which is what I mentioned in my previous video. And this is a very hot and dry part of France. So the problem is they had to, in order to make the canal work, they had to get water to that watershed. But in the 1660s, a man called Pierre Paul Riquet came up with a really good solution for getting water to the, the highest part of the region. Now, he was a retired tax collector, but, and he knew the area quite well. And he knew that to the north of here, there's a region called 
the Black Mountains. It's about 20, 30 miles away. And there's ri there are rivers up in the Black Mountains that flow higher than the planned route for the canal. So the idea he had was to channel the water down from the Black Mountains down to the uh, proposed route for the canal. So the government said to Pierre-Paul Riquet, OK, if you can actually build a channel, a waterway from the Black Mountains down to where we want to have the canal and actually have water flowing down there, then we'll go ahead with the entire project, we'll build a canal. And, and he did, he built his waterway. It's about 20 miles long, I think. And also, the, another problem they have here, in the summer, even the rivers in the Black Mountains get really dry. So, in order to have enough water in the summer, they would have to build a massive big dam up in the Black Mountains. So he built a waterway, and he also built a huge dam at a place called Sant Ferriol. And the dam is still in use today, and it holds 7 million square metres of water. So in January 1667, the first stone was laid. They had an opening ceremony, and the French government put Riquet in charge of the whole project. And he had a, a chief engineer working for him called Andriotti. I forgot his first name. But together they made a really good team and they immediately started to make progress on the canal. All the locks that have been built along the, the canal are built in this oval fashion. They don't, the, the sides aren't straight, they, they curved them. And the reason for that is they, they had to build them quite deep. And the, the problem with that, there was too much pressure on the walls and they just collapsed from the, the, the earth behind. So they had to do this, like a curved wall on each side, which stopped the earth, the, the sides, the earth from pushing the, the walls down. So it makes the, the wall a lot stronger. There were around 12,000 people involved in the construction of the canal. And Rike, he was quite a modern employer. He employed lots of women on the workforce as well. And he also paid them sick pay and paid them for the days when it was just too, the, the weather was just too bad for working. Unfortunately, like a lot of these really big civil engineering projects, it all went, oh, it went way over schedule and way over budget. And Rike ended up having to use his own money to complete the canal. The, can the canal was finally completed in 1681. But unfortunately, Rike, who was quite an elderly guy, he died the year before and his son, carried on with the overse overseeing the project. And when it was finally completed, the, the Rike family, they collected the tolls. They charged people for using the, the canal, but it took them decades to get their money back. They, they got it back eventually though. And f further up here tomorrow where the the watershed is, I've, I forgot the name of the place, but there's a, where the waterway from the Black Mountains comes down, there's a big obelisk, which is dedicated to Rike, so I hope to visit that tomorrow morning to have a look. The canal is 240 kilometers long, which is about 150 miles. But I don't know how many locks are along it. I was Googling last night and one website said there was 100 locks and I thought that's a bit strange, exactly 100. So I'm just going to say there are approximately 100 locks along the Canal du Midi.
I'm staying in a small town called Villefranche this afternoon. There's a, I'm staying in, it's an Airbnb, but it's not in the house. He, what the chap, like he hires out his garden. He's got a big garden and you can camp in the garden. But the thing is, he hasn't emailed me back. It's all being paid for. It's only, it's only 11 pounds. But I've emailed him and he hasn't emailed back, which I thought was a bit strange. So just in case that I get there and there's no reply, I'll be coming back to the canal to find, to find somewhere to camp. And there's a big supermarket very close by as well. So I've got no problem getting food and water. So on the way to the to Villefranche, I'm just going to look out for any nice big bunches of trees where I can just put my tent up tonight. But hopefully the, the guy will be there. So here I am at my own personal campsite. It's quite a good idea this, if anyone watching this, if you've got a big garden and you live near a tourist attraction or, or a long distance cycle path or something like that, and if you want to make 10 quid a, a night just hiring it out to campers, this is the way to go, just contact Airbnb. So I'm just going to start listening to the radio and plan tomorrow's route. So, good night. Saturday the 4th of July. Today I'm cycling to a place called Nuru's where the obelisk dedicated to Pierre Paul Riquet is. I've just arrived at Nuru's, so this is the waterway that comes down from the Black Mountains and just goes down to the canal just down there. So this is the watershed of the canal, so any water going this way goes down to the Atlantic and the water going that way will now go down to the Mediterranean. I've just arrived at the obelisk, but unfortunately it's locked. I won't be able to go inside and have a look, which is a pity, but I'm just going to have a walk around anyway. There's a nice view from up here. This is a really steep set of locks here. I've just arrived in Castel Nordery. There's a municipal campsite here, so I'm going to stay here tonight. And then it's just another 25 miles to Carcassonne, so That'll make a really nice trip for tomorrow. That's a nice uh, tree-lined boulevard heading into the centre of the town. Hello. 
So here I am at the Camping Municipal at Castle Nordery. It's eight euro fifty for one person for one night, which is, I think that's the cheapest one yet. So it seems, seems quite a nice campsite. It's about a mile from the town centre, which is a shame, but I've been to the shopping and I've had a look around the town. So I'm just gonna sit in the shade now and plan tomorrow's journey. So good night. Sunday, the 5th of July. So another nice hot day for my cycle rider carcass on. I have to do a bit of road cycling this morning because I went to a supermarket just outside Castle Nordry and in order to get back on the canal path it would have, I'd have to go back about a mile back into the town. So I thought, well, there's a nice road continuing to carcass on, so I'm taking that. Nice and flat, nice and quiet. My camera won't make it out, we're just over there. I can just make out some of the mountains of the Pyrenees. So hopefully one day I'll be traveling in that direction. The cycle path leading into Carcassonne is a little bit stony, uh, it's a bit of a bit rough. So I've decided to come off and go on this, back on this really lovely road going into Carcassonne. Definitely in wine country now. Just arrived in Carcassonne. This is the impressive medieval bridge that heads up to the, the the castle. The castle is just out of view at the moment, it's just behind the trees, but I'm just going to have a quick look up there and then I'm going to look for my Airbnb. That's the castle just ahead and the, the rest of the town is over in this direction. But fortunately my Airbnb is quite close to the, the old castle so I won't have very far to walk tonight. I'm staying for two nights in Carcassonne because the castle, it, it is absolutely huge and it's, so I'm going to spend a lot of tomorrow. I hope it's going to be nice weather tomorrow, but I'm going to spend a lot of time tomorrow wandering around and I'm going to find out about the history of it tonight on Google.
I think I'm going to upload this video tonight because I've got absolutely loads of footage, especially after today. And then I might carry on doing some more fact finding about Carcassonne tomorrow. But I think the weather's going to be a bit cloudy. So thank you very much for watching my video and I hope to upload another one soon. Bye.